All right, Brother Anthony Arnder is coming to lead in the singing tonight, and I'll let him decide if you can stand or sit. You guys look really nice out there standing, and Brother Witt's leaning over like he's fixing to fall over the front of the pew in front of you. So I better let you sit down. <laughs> Number 443. I didn't mean that disrespectfully, so... I have a lot of respect for Brother Witt. Amen. Some of you young people would go to Brother Tallman after the service and Brother Sankey and Brother Witt and even some of the younger people like me and ask us if God has ever failed them. I know that they would report that he never has. And that's why we can depend on him and trust in him. So if you young people will put your trust in him and give your life to him wholly and completely, you'll find out the same thing. Number 370. I thirsted in the barren land of sin and shame And nothing satisfying there I found But to the blessed cross of Christ one day They 
satisfied Drinking at the springs of living water Oh, wonderful and bountiful supply How sweet the living water from the hills of life It makes me glad and happy all the way Now glory, grace, and blessing mark the Brother Anthony for leading us in those songs tonight. And uh, how many have taken a drink of the satisfying portion that Christ provides? I hope that you can testify to that tonight. And uh, I, I'm not embarrassed if you're worried or, or thinking I am. And I've not been to the public pool. It's just I've been outside working. <clears throat> and uh, But as I was outside working... My little girl, Carrie, brought me a drink of water, and it's been a long time since water has satisfied like it did today. And, uh, but you know, as uh, someone that has been lost in sin, and when they come and drink of the fountain of life, of living water that Christ gives, oh, the satisfaction that that brings. And I trust you're still drinking from that fountain tonight. So good to see each of you in the service tonight. So good to see the Sankeys back. Glad that they're here. Thrilled that they can be here. So good to see Sister uh, Cooper. Yeah, I almost forgot your name. Uh, back. And uh, she, she, I think Brother Cooper said he was bringing a guest tonight. And uh, so glad that she's here tonight. Felt up to coming. Grateful she's here. And uh, so good to have Nancy back. It's good to have, let's see here, the Wits were gone Sunday night filling in at Loveland. Welcome back. Glad that you're here. And uh, each of you, Tyler was out uh, of town this weekend. Welcome back. Just glad that each of you are here in the service tonight. We're going to pray together in just a moment. But before we do that, let me mention just a few announcements. Don't forget regular. uh, Oh, well, let me back up before I get to Sunday. Don't forget Friday night is a youth get together. Six o'clock. Youth get together, and uh, Scott tells me that all of the young people or the families have been notified about what you're supposed to bring to that, and uh, the church is providing pizza, but if you are supposed to bring something from your family, I encourage you to remember that, but also uh, bring any of the outdoor games that you enjoy playing, disc golf or um, any of the other, bocce ball or whatever you want to bring. There will be a time for that. Of course, there will be volleyball as well. And so I encourage you to be here. And we've mentioned that this is a combined uh, youth get-together with the Chambersburg God Missionary Church. And so we, uh, we are excited about that and want you to be here if at all possible. If you have any questions about that, you can see Scott uh, after, after the service tonight. Regular service times on Sunday and uh, Sunday morning. Uh, Brother Chris Stamper will be preaching his final sermon here as an intern. And uh, so that will be Sunday morning. And then Sunday night is our camp meeting time again. And Matt and Joy Barnett will be sharing in the music, a baptismal service afterwards, church fellowship after that. I think we've got everything squared away for that. But just a lot going on this week. And so just keep, keep all of those things in mind. And I will mention that if you are planning to be baptized, one of the candidates for baptism, uh, I will meet you here at the church at 5 o'clock Sunday night. All right? So be here at 5 o'clock 
uh, for a, a special time of getting together. We'll go over things in preparation for the baptismal. Let me mention on Tuesday the 25th, uh, the Allegheny Wesleyan College group will be here for a service of music. I encourage you to be here. That will replace our normal Wednesday night prayer meeting. We're moving it to Tuesday, so I encourage you to be here for that. And then on out on your calendars, make sure you put August 1st on. This is a young men's Bible study, and uh, we did one of these last fall <clears throat> or last summer, I guess I should say. Uh, when Kyle Johnstone was an intern here and we, we did something unique where we had a Bible study, we had something to eat, but then we also provided something for the young people, the young men to learn. And uh, so they put together a, uh, or they watched or demonstrated um, the changing of a light fixture. And I, I hope it helped. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it just helped them know not what not to do to get electrocuted or whatever, to get shocked. But anyway, but we're going to do something similar to that. August the 1st, and uh, not sure exactly what all that will entail. We may just uh, uh, learn to change the oil in a vehicle or, or whatever. But something along that line, learning and growing together. So make sure you young men put that on your calendars. That will be August the 1st. There's something else on the e-bulletin that I have I've not mentioned yet that you have probably seen. It's also out there on the, the four-year screens. But <clears throat> it's, a, it's a little graph, a little design that just talks about our church's mission and our ministries. I think it's very, very important that uh, any organization stays true to its mission statement. And uh, at church, we say, loving God, loving others, God's command, our commitment. That kind of sums up our mission here at Burlington. And so some time ago, I decided I wanted to write down all of the different ministries that we do here at Burlington and see how it connects with our mission statement. And so Brother Tim Wilson did a great job putting that together. But uh, a lot of things that connect with loving others, a lot of the outreach of loving others, and then obviously a lot of services and revival and all of that kind of things that connect us to loving God. And uh, so I just wanted to mention that to you. That's what that graph or that's what that, that uh, special slide is all about. So if you want to know what we do here at Burlington, those are a lot of the ministries and they're all connected to our mission of loving God and loving others. And so I just wanted to make you aware of that. So those are, those are the, <clears throat> the announcements that I wanted to share. At this particular time, we are going to ask Sister Cooper to share um, one of the it had to be God moments. We've been doing those back some time, and we've taken a little break from that, but we, we wanted to get Sister Cooper, and she's been planning to do it for quite some time, but uh, just hasn't felt up to coming. And so when she came here tonight, I wanted to make sure that she felt up to doing it, and she said she had been rehearsing that in her mind. And so she is just going to sit where she's at. She has the, uh, the cordless mic. And uh, I think it's already unmuted back there, and I think it's ready to go. But we want Sister Cooper to share her It Had to Be God moment for our encouragement and enrichment at this time. Well, I think you might find it's more of a It Had to Be God decade. But anyhow, <laughs> when I was about 24 years old, a lady, a, a wonderful elderly saint at Stoneboro Camp, the Sankeys would know Georgia Marquis, adopted me as her granddaughter because she had found out both of my grandmothers were deceased. And we got talking about the fact that I didn't have a boyfriend, didn't look like anybody in the, in the near future or even distant future. <clears throat> even though I was teaching in a Bible college, I hadn't yet gotten my MRS. Well, she suggested something to me that I had never considered. And that was that God may have somebody for me who wasn't even yet a Christian. And her suggestion was that I pray for that person. I can't say that I did that real often, but on occasion, her advice would come to mind. And I would pray, Lord, if there is somebody for me wherever he is, not knowing that there was on the West Coast someplace, that God would speak to his heart. Well, <clears throat> when I was 29, that was five years later, the Lord sanctified me, and that was a wonderful, wonderful evening at Stoneboro. The next year at Stoneboro, when I turned 30, now that's a watershed, ladies. If you don't have a boyfriend, you don't have a husband, 
you kind of think you're maybe not going to get one. But as we were singing uh, Francis Ridley Havergal's song, Take my life and let it be, Lord, consecrated, Lord, to thee. We came to the verse that said, Take my love, my God I pour at thy feet, it's treasure store. And in my heart I said, Lord, I'm 30, I'm a school teacher, I don't have any future, as far as I know, for marriage. But I want you to take the love that I would give a man, if there were one, and hold it as a special gift. I'm just giving it to you as something special. Because I, I'll be the happiest old maid school teacher in the world if that's what you want. Well, the next year, 1981, there were there's a lot of chatter going around Stoneboro Camp. And part of that chatter was, you need to meet that rich bachelor from Maryland. <laughs> You know, somebody that drives a BMW onto the campground? You need to re meet that rich bachelor from Maryland. And I'm like, yeah, right. Well, <clears throat> I didn't meet him that year. But the next year, I was chatting with a friend, and he came to greet the friend. And it was only polite of my friend to introduce us. And so I met him. And before that camp was over, he expressed an interest in getting to know me better. However, there were a lot of people from his church, a pioneer church, who were going to the altar during that camp time, far more than his pastor could pray with at one time. And so he expre explained to me that really that was his priority, and that really, that was some good extra points for him. He had the right priority there. The next spring, coming into April, was um, the Allegheny Conferences, <clears throat> ministerial institute, and ordinarily, I would have had no reason to be there. But it turned out they needed a pianist. And I got permission from my principal to be out of school for three days <coughs> and go to ministerial institute to serve as the, as the pianist. And guess who was there with his pastor? And guess who asked me out twice? And then guess who spent all of camp time, 1983, with me at Stoneboro. I mention Stoneboro a lot, don't I? <laughs> well, that was, that was August of 1983. But going back just a little bit to Ministerial Institute, as I was driving, <clears throat> excuse me, as I was driving home after the last service, I was feeling I don't know, quite a mixture of feelings. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, you remember that gift of love you entrusted to me? And I said, yeah. And he said, this is the man that you can give it to. And as you know, the rest is history. We've been married 39 years. It had to be God. Well, thank you. Thank you so very much, Sister Cooper, for that wonderful It Had to Be God segment. And you know, I, I'm convinced that, um, that while the, the circumstances and the details and, and uh, all of those things may be different, the, the underlying truth and the underlying reality is God cares for each of us. And God is providentially working in each of our lives and he is guiding each one of us. And so I think while, while her, her it had to be God moment might not be yours, I think what we can understand from that is God cares and he is sovereign involved and he is working all things for his good in our lives. And so we can rest in that tonight. Thank you so much for, for sharing. <clears throat> If you didn't hear her, she said Marvin has his own story of how he got to the East Coast from the West Coast. But uh, anyway, interesting. Thank you so much for sharing. And, uh, well, does anybody know of any rich bachelors around? <laughs> <laughs> that might be the question. Oh, anyway, thank you so much for sharing. Be encouraged. It had to be God moments. 
they can happen in your life as well. So be, be watching out for those. We want to go to prayer tonight. <clears throat> We're going to seek the Lord together. I'm going to ask Brother Albertson if he will lead us in prayer in just a couple of moments. But several things I want to mention, and then I'll obviously allow you time to, uh, to bring any requests that you might have. But several things going on this week. Um, as far as spiritual renewal emphasis and so forth, but the Kentucky local IHC is going on right now. began last night. We'll continue through Friday. And uh, Brother Loper is chairing those services. Brother Adam Buckler is preaching and uh, sharing in, in four different services in Kentucky area, in Lexington and Somerset and Louisville. <clears throat> uh, and I'm not sure where the other one was. Anyway, but uh, in the, in, there's a... Do you have the, uh, oh, okay. Where Brother Buckler's from? Olive Hill. Okay, Olive Hill and the church in Lexington, the Nazarene church there in Lexington and Louisville. I think the Somerset one was last night. But anyway, so that is going on this week. Be much in prayer for that. The Lord would encourage these local churches. And the ministry of IHC is so very, very valuable to the local churches. We think of it in terms a lot of times of the annual convention. But <clears throat> so many local conventions that it, it's a spark plug and an encouragement. And so let's pray for the Kentucky Convention. Some camps that are going on this week. Bryantsburg Camp. Let's continue to pray for, for that camp. That will be closing out Sunday. Carthage Camp began last night. That will be closing out Sunday. 7 o'clock each evening. Encourage you to be there and be a part of that if you can, as well as Bryantsburg, 7 o'clock. And then Daryl is at a camp uh, also this week in Pennsylvania, Beulah Camp. So we want to remember him as he's ministering uh, there at that camp. Um, Daryl and Regina are actually providing the music, and Kenny Stetler is, is doing the preaching. And so I know they're enjoying that, uh, those, those workers, but let's, let's pray for them tonight. Some other needs that we want to mention, I want us to pray for Retha. Retha is planning to go on a trip here shortly and uh, just trying to get all the details worked out uh, for her to fly to Missouri. So let's pray for, for Retha as she is planning this trip. The Lord is able to give her special help. I want us to pray for the Lawsons. <clears throat> I know the time is coming very close uh, for uh, David's surgery open heart surgery and so I want us to pray the Lord would give David a special physical touch and uh, for Del and Betty as they are, are ministering and caring for him. Sister Hill has mentioned a couple of requests that she wanted me to mention. She has a neighbor by the name of Jessica whose son Chris needs prayer and Jessica wants us to be praying for Chris and has had some tests and looks like he has some things that need to be adjusted, maybe some levels that need to be adjusted. And so we want to pray for Chris. And then she also mentioned that she was in uh, Dollar Tree, I think. And uh, just a, a random shopper in there said to her, do you go to church? Are you, are you someone that goes to church? And she said she was. And uh, this lady was just really really traumatized. Well, actually, it's, it's, she was carrying kind of a burden for her neighbor who was extremely traumatized, found her son that was just 22 years of age, uh, found him dead. And so this lady's neighbor was just really struggling with that. And so this random person in Dollar Tree asked Sister Hill if uh, we would pray for her neighbor. And so let's pray for uh, Katrina. I think Katrina is her name. So let's remember that request tonight. I think it's also fitting for us to, to give the Lord praise for Tim Sedlicek. It looks like he found a, a temporary job, at least for now, and I don't know for sure if that might transition into a full-time employment or not. But right now, we want to thank the Lord for this temporary job employment, and uh, let's continue to pray for Tim. The Lord will work all of those details out. I'm so glad that God knows and is able to continue to give special help there. Are there any other spoken requests that you would like to mention as we pray? Any, any requests that you would like to mention? Yes, Sherry? <clears throat> All right, let's remember this family in Florida. The Lord is able to give special help. Yes, Sister Hill?
All right, let's pray for Sister Hill. She'll be flying to California. The Lord is able to give her special help along the, and strength for the journey. Let's pray for Sister Hill. She'll be gone. Yes, Carrie? All right. Oh, okay. All right. She wants to pray for Mary Lee. Thank you for that reminder. Mary Lee sent a, a message to all of the family today. And, of course, you, most of you know that, that Mary Lee has had some, some ongoing physical problems. And uh, she uh, texted today or messaged today and was just having one of the worst days she's had in quite a while. And uh, she is supposed to be taking her children to Stoneboro. The youth convention starts tonight. And, uh, and so she was just asking for special prayer. So I wish you'd help us pray for Mary Lee. The Lord would give her a physical touch. <clears throat> All right, any other requests that you would like to mention? Yes, Retha. All right, let's remember this acquaintance of Retha. Uh, lady at the bank's husband, Tony, is battling cancer. Let's remember this request tonight. Brother Tim. All right, let's remember these needs, remember our country, and remember uh, the, the ongoing issue in Ukraine. The Lord is able to provide victory and help there. Any other spoken requests you might have? All right. All right, let's pray for this. These acquaintance of, of the wits, the Lord would give special help. Amen. Maybe you have an unspoken request you'd like to mention by an upraised hand, many needs represented by those hands. And God knows about every single one of them. And He knows, <clears throat> he knows the, the circumstances, the details, the burden, whatever it is in your life. And He's able to give special help. So let's, let's pray for these needs tonight. Let's kneel if you're able. Brother Albertson will lead us in prayer. Let's begin with praise. Find something to thank the Lord for. And then let's bring our petitions to Him as He leads us to the throne of grace today. Thank you. 
We pray, Lord, for these, for these camps that are going on. We pray for Brian's Bird, Carthage Camp, and Beulah Camp that's going on now. We pray, oh God, that you would, you would manifest yourself in real ways. And those that are there and those that are, that are seeking you, we pray for them. Pray, Lord, for reasons that you're planning this trip, Lord, every detail out. We pray for her acquaintances, husbands, tell me about the cancer. We pray that you come there. We pray, Lord, for, for Sherry Martin, Holy Spirit, Lord, Linda, and their situation and their family. We pray, oh God, that you can work all, all the details out. Lord, our confidence is over you. Oh, Lord, we recognize that we are so limited. We are so incapable of working all things out before we commit it to you. We turn it over to you. Help the burdens of this service to be going on there. Oh, we're trusting you, Lord. Come, sweet spirit, your way. Do your work. Do your work. Do your work. Do your work. Thank you, Brother Albertson, for leading us in prayer tonight. Well, it is time for our little missions segment. We started this, uh, oh, about three months ago, four months ago. And uh, we had Sister Sankey and Sister Sherry Martinoli to work together to provide us a little update on one of our missionaries. And so last time they updated us on the Crestman family. And so they are going to update us on another mission, one of our one of our missionaries that we support here at Burlington. So I want to invite them to come as they're coming. <clears throat> I I was just looking back on on Facebook from our church, and I saw the cutest picture. I don't know if you have seen the picture that was taken of Sister Sankey and Sherry Martinoli when they did the mission segment the last time. And it was just a beautiful picture. It was such a cute picture. You have to go back and look at it. If you don't mind to do that again for the picture, for the camera, so we can post it again, we'd appreciate that. Oh, uh, well, we do. We certainly do thank them for, for their help and for being willing to help us out. Is it on now? There it is. Is it on? Am I talking loud now? I've never been cute before, so I don't know about that picture. Who's taking pictures here, but they ain't getting a cute one tonight. <laughs> so we'll just start from here. First of all, aside from the missionaries, thank you all for praying so faithfully for the Sankeys. We're here tonight because of your prayers and for many others who have prayed and prayed and prayed. Um, we, as you well know, have not been able to come to church for over two months. And that is just eternity for us. But it's so good to be able to be well enough to do that. We do not know what tomorrow holds. We have already been promised more valleys and a few more mountains before the journey's over. But we're doing it a day at a time. And this week we've had a good week. For the last three weeks, I have given him IV infusions through a pick line. And if you know anything about pick lines, they're pretty picky. You have to be careful with them. And uh, so I think out of, I gave him 54 treatments in the last three weeks myself. 
out of 60 that he had before he came home from the hospital. He had the total of 60 or 63. Anyways, I gave a lot of them. So we were happy to get the pick line out early this week. Yeah. And um, Brother Sank, he's doing much, much better. So keep praying. Keep praying. We want, we'd like to have a few extra good days now. Thank you so much. Well, we're only supposed to have five minutes. So this has, what I just said has nothing to do with what we <laughs> um, We've chosen this time, and we had chosen before, to talk about the Hopkins, Jeremy and Esther. Well, they came home in between the time that uh, we talked about Cressman's and now, so they gave you an update about themselves. But I think it's good for us to be able to just refresh your minds about our missionaries that we support. And Jeremy and Esther remind me a lot of us when we went to the mission field. I think, I mean, they're older than I was. I was 21 when I went to the mission field. I thought I was 50, you know. I, I just thought I was all grown up. Um, and so many, so many things that I've thought about with them and, and ways to pray for them. Uh, as a young couple, and they're doing a wonderful job from everything I uh, hear. So they gave an update. I hope I don't repeat a lot of things that they said, but I'm going to just give you a paragraph of update from them. And then Sherry has some concerns and projects. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Esther told about um, having a ladies' retreat. And we do ladies' retreats here in the States, and it's always a good time of fellowship for the ladies. But it is very, very special for our national ladies on the mission field to be able to get together, worship the Lord, and for them just to not have to cook in the day is a wonderful thing. Um, to not have other responsibilities because they are very, very hardworking ladies. So uh, Esther said that that retreat was so refreshing to just see the ladies enjoy having time for themselves to um, worship the Lord. And um, it's, she said it's the opportunity to have someone else cook for them and have uninterrupted time with God is a rarity they do not take for granted. So I thought that was special. And then she talked a little bit about coming home for IHC and, and teaching the children at IHC, and that was wonderful. But the one paragraph that really stood out to me that I want to share with you is, in addition to the larger events, we, we are enjoying settling into the daily routines of preaching, Bible studies, children's services, and more. We wish we could introduce you to all the beautiful people here who are quickly becoming our friends. The list of language blunders, unfortunately, continues providing much laughter. <laughs> Two especially memorable ones were the Sunday Esther was teaching the children and told them in heaven, there will be streets of eyes. <laughs> because the word she used was ojos instead of oro, which is gold. So the streets of eyes in heaven rather than oro, gold. So you just learn. Uh, we have lots of stories that we can tell or the one that they will never forget that happened during the ladies' retreat, are you sure, is the Spanish word, uh, the Spanish word is seguro. And so it can be used differently, but seguro is the word that's used frequently to say, are you sure? So one morning while she was driving Sister Rosa Maria to get breakfast, she waited quite some time before getting out of the car. And she repeatedly asked, Sister Rosa said, Seguro? To which we assured her there were no cars coming and even got out to show her it was indeed safe to get out of the car. <laughs> After a moment of confusion, we realized the word Seguro is also the word for lock. And she was just waiting for us to unlock the car. <laughs> Those are 
fun things that happen, but they happen daily uh, when you're trying to learn a new language. I will say that they have, they at least had the privilege of going to language school. We didn't. We learned it on the streets. So, my one of my bloopers that I remember so much is that the word for well, one of our church ladies was. I was trying to be real spiritual and talk to her, and she said, "Is she used the word? She said, is hell really hot?" And I thought, well, this is a good opportunity for me to tell her, yeah, you know, that we don't want to go there. So I told her, yes, hell was really hot, except that she used the word invierno, which I thought she meant infierno, which was hell. And invierno actually, actually is winter, but I thought it was summer. So I told her, yes, summer was really hot. And I thought, I failed miserably in trying to help somebody get to heaven by just, you know, whatever. So anyhow, and only one other one, and I'll quit. First day on the mission field. First day, I knew no Spanish except adios. Um, and so I thought, I'm going visiting in the hospital on Sunday afternoon with the missionary, and I will just do whatever she does. I'll nod my head, I'll say no, I'll whatever. So she, um, we walked into the hospital, and there were lots of beggars lining the uh, doorways of the hospital, and a lot of poor people that were so sick, and uh, rooms were very poor, and two people to a bed, and it was just really sad. But as we walked in, there was a poor lady that uh, reached her hand out to Mary, my colleague, and she she said, I know what she said now, but she said, centavito, centavito, she wanted a penny, she wanted some money, she was begging. And Mary said, no, no, uh, and she walked on through. So the lady came to me, I don't know what she said. Well, I know now what she said. I didn't then. But she said, oh, you're a believer. You're a Christian. And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> you better know what you're trying to say when you get there. But, so pray, pray, for the, pray for Jeremy and Esther. And pray for the Saints too. <laughs> okay. And speaking of prayer. Um, Esther was kind enough to send us some information about things that, that was really on their hearts. And she had prayer concerns and she asked us to pray for them to be effective in their ministry. Because without a, a team of people talking to the Father, you know, that they would never be able to do it. And she said and to pray for God's wisdom as they try to do vacation Bible school services. They wanted to hold them in several churches over the summer. And also that to pray that God would uh, save souls and deepen the spiritual walk of the saved in the church in Los Angeles. <laughs> I got a new Spanish word. And she also wanted to request prayer for them. They were having a special project. If you send them packages or things like that, they have to pay a large, large duty on it. Often much more than the package is worth. So to help them, I'm sorry, hold it higher. I thought everybody could hear me. But it said, as we plan toward their installation of being a pastor at Los Angeles, that one of their first goals is to do some remodeling at the church. And this includes painting the outside, getting a new sign, redecorating, and some other minor things. And she said she would love to raise $3,000 to do this. And if you feel in your heart that you would like to give toward this project, you can give it online or by mail just by marking all the donations at Los Yubas Project. And she wanted to thank everybody for even thinking about them and for praying for them. And it, she's so sweet. She's been in this church since I've been coming here, and I don't know how long she was before. So I know just how sweet a lady she is and what a, a wonderful Christian she is. And I also wanted to add a little thing. If you all remember Minnie Pearl, She's a country comedian, and we're sitting there talking away as before church, and, and Janet says, and I'm like, what, what? And she said, 
you got a tag under there. I said, what? And sure enough, the price tag was still on my sleeve. And I wore this sweater a week ago, and nobody ever pointed that out. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. That's what friends are for. Yes, <laughs> very much. All right, thank you so very much, Chris. If you want to get that, I appreciate it so very, very much. Emily, did you get a good picture of them? I hope you got a good picture of them. But, uh, they, did a, they did a great job. And uh, talking about all of the blunders of Spanish words, <clears throat> I've never really had any myself because I've not traveled. I've traveled to Belize, but they primarily speak English. So I've not had a lot of interaction with translators and all of that. But... I did hear that Brother Dogra one time went to Honduras, and the word for brother and monkey are very, very similar. <laughs> and uh, hermano is brother, and el mono is right, is that something like that, is monkey, and so instead of calling people brothers, he was calling them monkeys. So I know, I know that it's very possible to get things all switched up. But uh, thank you for that update. Yes. One more oh, yes. Oh, sure. Help yourself. to the restaurant. <laughs> oh my. Well, thank you so very much. I hope that this little snapshot will, uh, will bring the Hopkins to your mind, maybe more readily, and ways that you can pray for them. So I, I encourage you to do that. And I just wanted to mention also, I know that uh, Sherry mentioned that it's costly for them to receive anything. Um, so, like, if you if we were to do a huge package, we were able to do that with the Crestmans. They were still on state side. So that made it possible. But with someone already over there, it's a lot of money to get, get it through customs and all that kind of stuff. And so I just wanted to report that we did when the Hopkins came through and gave an update a few weeks ago. The missions department gave $500 to them. 
and uh, so that certainly helped them out with travel expenses and so forth. So I just wanted you to know that that's kind of taking the place of us sending something to them. And of course, there was the opportunity if somebody is interested in helping out with that particular project, there's ways that you can do that. But I just wanted you to be aware that the church has given a love offering to them to help them in their travels. All right, this time Chris is going to come and share the, share the testimonies. Well, we kind of switched the order up just a little bit so Andy could announce that. But who came ready to testify about what the Lord has done for you tonight? And actually, I'm going to call on my little brother Nathan to testify because he's going to love me for that. But Nathan, why don't you start us off? Amen. Amen. All right, Noah, I see you too. We're just going to go right down the line right here. else has been put to shame yet. <laughs> well, I'd be remiss if I did not say and thank the Lord for helping me this summer. Um, I finished up my, the last of my schoolwork and uh, finished all my practical hours, and I still have some sunk in yet. Like, I still feel quite this grace for but um, I'm very thankful for himself. I'm very thankful for God for working out, and I'm just uh, so glad that I have a friend that cares about my life and cares about the little details. Praise the Lord. All right, front row, we've got a couple. Jesus. I thought I saw one in the back as well. Right. I look back over 
Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Brittany. Don't fall asleep. And actually, I'm going to ask a question. So sometimes it's nice to know the impact you've made before you leave a place. And so I just want to see if you had a particular impact that Scott has given you in your life to raise your hand. Has Scott impacted you in a deep way? Scott? All right, turn it over to Scott. Thank you. You don't have to worry. I know it's 702. You should worry, actually. I was just caught up in all your testimonies. That will be my excuse. No, I know it's 8.01, and I'm not going to be very long, but I do want to take this time uh, to share a little bit from my heart. And that's what this will be tonight, from my heart, not exactly a sermon. A little while back, I spoke on uh, John chapter 10. If you remember, I talked about the parable of the Good Shepherd. Who remembers that? If you don't, that's all right. But you might remember that. I talked about sheep, about dumb sheep. You might remember that. And uh, I gave three characteristics that the Good Shepherd possesses. And they were the Good Shepherd dies for a sheep. The Good Shepherd knows his sheep. And the good shepherd must be followed. The reason I mention that is because I could have, now that I've come back from that sermon a little bit and thought about it, I could have added one more uh, point, you could say, and that would be a prerequisite. And I also talked about prerequisites a little while back as well. But a prerequisite to following the good shepherd is listening for his voice. Listening for his voice. We as sheep have to listen. And I, if you want, you can turn in your Bibles to John chapter 10. I'm just going to read it quickly, verses 1 through 4. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth. And the sheep hear... His voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. This evening, very quickly, I would like to share with you about listening for the shepherd's voice as he leads you. Kate and I have had the distinct pleasure to serve here at Burlington for almost a year now. It's been a pleasure, and I want to thank you as a church family. And the folks here tonight are some of the core people. You truly are. I know some are missing, but I want to thank you for those who have supported us and accepted us as your youth pastor. I want you to know deeply that I appreciate the kind words, cards, prayers, and overall gracious spirit that you have given me and I know I'm a rookie, and I've made a few rookie mistakes, one of which, I must add, that Chris has made, and that is when uh, you get up to do prayer time that you ask somebody to pray before you give the request. And I've had to pray a couple of times when I didn't realize I should or I didn't want to, but I just did because I felt bad to call on somebody at a late notice. That's what happened. Um, If you didn't know, you probably realized halfway through my prayer as I was stuttering and stammering. But thank you for your love, grace, and support through those times. As I mentioned previously, I'm talking 
tonight about following the shepherd's voice. And as this year progressed, and as Kate and I sought the mind of the Lord, and we are committed to his plan, and we realized that the good shepherd was leading us somewhere. And I might stop and add there, the shepherd, the good shepherd, always leads. As sheep, we have to fulfill the pre- prerequisite of listening before he can lead. Did you catch that? You have to listen before he can lead you anywhere. Yes, God is fully capable of doing whatever he wishes. And he can communicate with us however he wants to. But we have to have a, an ear that will hear and obey. And as events happened in our lives and as we continued to pray, the good shepherd had led. And friends, I want to remind you again that the good shepherd, as I just mentioned, always leads. He leads your family. He leads your heart. He leads how you conduct your everyday life. He leads how you talk and how you dress. He leads in everything in your life if you're surrendered to him. The good shepherd leads. And so, as the good shepherd was leading us, we began to listen. We took the steps that we believed we should take. We walked through the doors that the good shepherd opened. And before long, the good shepherd had us to our destination. God had called, and we as sheep answered. Kate and I have felt the call and are committed to doing the will of the Lord. And that is taking the position at Lebanon God's Missionary Church. The good shepherd had led. I tell you all of that tonight, not because you didn't know. I know many of you, all of you, know exactly what I just shared. And I know it's been announced, and in fact, as this is my last time sharing in this capacity, you know that it's coming to an end. But I bring all of that up tonight to, again, to bring it to the front of your mind to tell you this. I want our young people to know, I want our middle-aged people to know, and I want our seasoned, young-at-heart people to know that the Good Shepherd leads. He may not lead how you want him to. He may not lead how he's led Kate and I. But friends, you must hear and listen to his promptings and leadership in your life. The Good Shepherd leads. So tonight, I want you to remember this. The good shepherd has led a couple sheep, and the sheep have followed. Kate and I are committed to following the shepherd. And I pray that you always follow the shepherd. I want to thank Pastor Stroud, Pastor Stetler, and the board, and everyone involved for my time here. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's truly been a pleasure. And I want to thank you very much. And I also want to say here that I am very excited for you and your young people, as Eli and Ellie are here tonight. I believe you have some of the best, and they are coming um, really soon. I don't know when their start date is, maybe not next Sunday or the next, 2, 3, 3rd, 23rd. Okay, 23rd, and um, they will do a great job, fully support it. And I hope you put your support behind them. I hope you love them, and I know you will. But I am 100% on board with that. Lastly, and I do mean lastly, it's been seven minutes. As a pastor, I feel the need and the urge to give you three last uh, exhortations, you could say. And I won't, I do have things to talk about here that I could uh, linger on, but I won't. I'll just give you three. No uh, extra preaching, um, whatever you would call it, jargon. I'll just leave it at three. As a church, stay committed to the word. Maybe I should say this on that point. (laughs) Don't allow the world to dictate how you read the Bible. Allow the Bible to dictate how you view the world. Next. Stay connected to the church. 
I'll move on. And lastly, stay connected to the source. And I will read this. Friends, your eyesight may fail. Your hearing may fade. Your legs may falter. But friends, your soul can stay connected. Friends, the source is Jesus. And he loves and he cares for you. And one day, he will welcome you into the kingdom of God. Stay connected to him. Thank you so much. Let's stand together. Nine minutes. Father in heaven, thank you for this time that we have had together tonight. Thank you for Burlington and what they uh, have stood for and mean to this movement and to these families here tonight. We pray that you would be with them as they are in the midst of transition, as I am in the midst of transition. We pray that you would be near us now as we go our separate ways. In your name, amen. Shake hands, be friendly, and smile a lot. You're dismissed.